Y'all gang is fucking awesome and it's gonna change the world. Bitches. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Hey. Hello! Hi, I'm JD and I am here with the singer, songwriter, pop star, political activist, creator of Girl Gang TV, Kate Nash, for this episode of Broadly Meets. Kate Nash is the English singer-songwriter that launched herself to pop stardom after beginning her career as a teenager on MySpace, soon attracting managers and producers who were drawn to her unique stripped-down sound and DIY ethos. In 2007, at the age of 20, Nash's first ever album, Made of Bricks, went platinum. She instantly became the pop star audiences needed, free of artifice and gimmicks, and full of raw emotion. <laughs> Her latest creative endeavor takes her back online with Girl Gang TV, an original YouTube show that fuses art and feminism. You had a platinum selling record when you were 20. Yeah. And it seemed like you got there really quickly from when you first started playing shows. Yeah. Can you explain more about that process? Not really, because it did happen so quickly, and I was like, whoa, what just happened? I think I, was, I came in a pocket of time that was really important. MySpace only existed for like a short period of time, but it did something really powerful, and then it was gone really quickly, you know? And I think it was also one of those things where people wanted reality again. Sometimes people want like really shiny things that they don't feel like they could touch and they want people to be like, I've got so much money and you don't and woo and like sort of live vicariously through that. And other times they want someone that's like real and like relatable. And I think I came along at that sort of time where people were craving real pop stars and it was, it was an exciting time for music. What music were you listening to? What was your inspiration? At the time, I was like really into like Regina Spector, The Strokes, Moldy Peaches, La Tigra, and <laughs> but yeah, when I you know just kind of coming out of high school and like discovering sort of like my identity through music. I've heard that you have been influenced a lot by the Riot Girl movement. Can you explain it a little bit? Oh my God. Um, Riot Girl was a really powerful movement, like in the 90s, that was very aggressive and about like having girls in bands protest, like put up the middle finger to what mainstream culture and society was telling women that they had to be. At what point was Riot Girl like a big part of your life? It was once I'd like started touring because I just sort of got overwhelmed with my life at the time. And the media were pretty brutal to me. Writing stuff like, too ugly to be a pop star, like commenting on my weight, pictures of me with like red circles around my like acne and stuff. And I was just like a 20 year old going through that stuff and just being like, oh my God, how do I cope with this without, you know, getting ill basically. Riot Girl was sort of like, helped me get through all of that stuff because I'd always loved punk music. I like the idea of like standing against, you know, the tide. And I think Riot Girl is just about like feeling really empowered and like not giving a fuck like what anyone says about you and being really like raw and brave and just going out there knowing that people are like gonna attack you and, and, and being fine with that. It like it helped me have the identity of just being really strong. It's like Riot Girl was your therapy. Yeah, something. it was. It was like my friend in battle kind of thing. And I would like listen to like particular songs before I go on stage and it like just helped me feel really powerful. I guess if you can just talk a little bit about some of the bands in the Riot Girl movement that inspired you. I mean, Bikini Kill, obviously. And like Kathleen's spoken word, I was really obsessed with. And Bratmobile and Huggy Bear. Kind of any band that I found around that era I was always really interested. I feel like your career has like gone through so many different transformations yeah. or something. I mean, it's, yeah. it's like you were like a singer-songwriter kind of that became like poppy and then yeah. you kind of like went through a moment like with the receders where you were just yeah. like, I want to make punk music yeah. and I'm interested to know like where you are right now. I mean, I've always felt like a bit of an outsider in a way, but I've definitely been an outsider of the industry for a couple of years because I got dropped from my record label and I put Girl Talk out independently. 
And that was like the best thing that ever happened to me. It just kind of shook my world up and like really brought me back to like my DIY roots and developed an even stronger relationship with my fan base and taught me so much about what I actually want. So within that DIY culture, it seems like it's been important for you to kind of help other people start their own DIY cultures. Yeah. And I'm wondering about your after school girls music project. That was born out of me feeling quite bitter about there not being enough women in the music industry and questions that I was asked over and over by journalists that did my head in. And then I did a panel talk about like the statistics of like women in the industry that really depressed me. And I wanted to turn it on its head and make it something positive because that maybe will help me get over being bitter about there not being enough girls. Like, let's actually just try and make more girls want to be involved. Let's talk a little bit about what you've been doing recently. Girl Gang TV is a YouTube channel made by me and some girls in LA that started a community to educate and inspire each other using creativity. I was like, I kind of want to have like a female Wayne's World in my garage. It started out just us talking about feminism and the idea is to make cool shit and change the world. And then obviously fans online were like, we want to be involved. So I met two really, really cool videographers, Sophia Muller and Kelsey Hart. We decided to make a YouTube channel so we could bring like what we were doing, which was trying to inspire and educate each other about things that you know we weren't experts at, but someone was interested in. Just keep challenging each other and bring that like to a wider audience. And um, I think just making sure that like men feel included. It's not like girl gang means that like no men allowed. I think like men are really important in the discussion of like feminism. So much of our feminist culture is about kind of like dealing with bullshit from the yeah. rest of the mainstream. I love how you're able to spin that around and create something positive in your work. And I was wondering if you could just like walk through the experience of like being pissed off into making yeah. something. Well, I think that being pissed off and sort of all the bullshit in the world is really important in triggering being inspired sort of in, in my life. I've always had like a cause. It's really important to like stand up for what you believe in. And if you are capable of having a voice, then use it because there's people out there who aren't. Encouraging someone is very powerful and very easy to do. And I have a platform where I have like a bunch of people listening to what I say. And I feel like anyone who has a platform has a responsibility to talk about things they care about. And I care about girls and feminism um, and changing the world. <laughs>